uh, welcome to this lecture of microscale transport process. The topic that uh, we, we would like to discuss today is uh, uh, this plastic microfluidic devices. You have already understood that there are certain methods to, to, to manufacture these plastic devices uh, from uh, by the use of a mold. So, there are uh, three techniques we talked about, one is casting, another is molding, another is micro injection. Now, we, I basically in, in previous lectures, I discussed this process just as a technique. I mean you have a mold, you have, you have a, um, uh, you have a liquid, uh, you have a polymeric, uh, you have that plastic material above its glass transition temperature and you pour it and then after some time you take it take the uh, uh, take the negative uh, part of it and the, that that serves as microfluidic device and and there are methods how to do the casting and micro injection we have discussed this in detail what i would like to do today is i would like to discuss the the theories the physics that controls this process it, it's it's not like i mean just uh, you pour something and it will automatically happen. There are certain physics. For example, the capillary force, which is instrumental in taking that molten, taking that plastic melt, that uh, uh, plastic melt to go inside that those the, those structures. So these are extremely important. So you need to understand that there are certain physics which you need to consider if you want to make a plastic if you make uh, successfully a plastic microfluidic device. So, my intent in today's class is to is to is to at least uh, touch upon those issues in physics which you need to know to handle this manufacturing of plastic microfluidic devices better. Let us see what we have here. So, so what you have here is uh, is basically the you, you you are having i mean first of all i say that uh, what we are talking about here is patterning patterning by natural force such as capillary action okay why why we are saying this is that the mold with relief features what is relief feature relief feature is that those for example you want to make a channel so there is i mean the negative part of it is would be that there would be a raised portion right so there with so there are there are relief features or if you want a raised portion in the microfluidic device for that you you are supposed to have a channel in the negative part so the mold with relief feature relief features when placed on a fluid when placed on a fluid okay or or, or solid surface uh, you may say why am i placing it on the fluid because i thought we are pouring the fluid on this I, uh, probably what what this what i am talking about here is you have a substrate which is flat then you have a mold this is the mold okay so you bring this mold bring in contact with this substrate okay and then you put then then you put molten polymer into one of these channels and so this is bring this is brought in contact with this so there they are there is no no diff, no 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 spacing here so they are in contact and then you are pouring the liquid at one end and you will see that by capillary action it goes everywhere this is this is this has a third dimension all right so these channels also have third dimension so you, you got my point what i'm trying to say so the mold with relief feature so these are the relief features when placed on a fluid or solid surface the space between the mold the space between the mold and the surface 
creates network of capillaries. Network of capillaries. You understand what I'm talking about? I mean, they, then this would be this would be so this this spacing is gone. So the basically the, so so if if I advance this substrate, so this is the place where the substrate is. So this is the place where the substrate is now. So I, I so then you, you these would be forming. So all these channels or the raised places, they will form a network of capillaries, if you will. But if, if we introduce polymer at at one end of the channel, so there are network of capillaries. This you understand. Now this network of capillaries, there are there are three possibilities. One is open ended. Second possibility is closed and the third possibility is closed permeable. I mean closed though it is it is permeable. What, what I mean by this is open ended means let us let us let us see first what, what happens if you have a closed capillary. You have a network of capillary, you had a mold. So this mold has a third third dimension here. So you are bringing this mold. You are bringing this mold in contact with another flat substrate. So you have formed a network of capillary, and then you are introducing the fluid. That means that molten that uh, polymer above its glass transition temperature, which is in its li very viscous liquid state. You pour that here. And you expect that it will go everywhere by capillary action. Now, if this capillary is open ended, that means if you have an opening here, open to atmosphere, so you will at least make sure one thing that is that the air that is inside, because it is originally filled with air, right? When you introduce the liquid that air need not get compressed. So, when, when the as the as the fluid moves in, fluid can move in everywhere and the air can go out because these are all connected. Okay, connected network of capillary, so air can go out. So so you don't have you, you don't have a problem of compressing the air. So this is this is one one issue here. The second is closed one. That means you do not have any air outlet. So it is it is all closed except the end through which you have introduced the polymer that that li liquid uh, polymer at above its glass transition uh, temperature. So, in that case you will consider these to be closed. So, in that case if by capillary action you are pushing if the capillary action is pushing that liquid, but still it, air is getting compressed you, you need to understand this. And the third type is closed permeable you know that certain polymers they are permeable uh, they can they can allow air or vapor to pass through it. There are there are uh, various mechanisms it is not it, it, it is like uh, 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 the students who have studied membranes they will appreciate it that it would it will not be that this this material is porous what will happen is certain vapor will get dissolved in the polymer and then it will go out from the other end. So, there are various mechanisms possible it is not just that it is physically there are holes and through holes the air is passing out. It is an intact polymer, but uh, suppose the um, I mean why I am talking about uh, talking about vapor is lot of times your uh, you you may not melt it. I mean I am talking about a molten. I am talking about a polymer melt, but it could very well be possible that you do not melt it. You add certain solvent by which that polymer becomes the polymer dissolves in that solvent and it becomes liquid. And if you can somehow get rid of that solvent then polymer will go back to its own state. So, that is that is a possibility. So, if you are using that method then if you can somehow allow the solvent to go out of the system that is all you need okay it is not air. And if that solvent if the if the if the micro if the microfluidic device the plastic material that you are using allow the solvent if that allows the solvent to go through it allowing the solvent means that solvent will dissolve so if the if this is the if this is the if this is the layer 
if this is the plastic layer solvent will dissolve in this in this material and then permeate through it okay and then it gets it goes out through the other end it is it is not that you have a, you have a predetermined uh, uh, pore structure pore pore present through which it is traveling it is it is a complex mechanism i mean it's it's not uh, it's it's a physico chemical mechanism not exactly a physical mechanism by which this transfer may take place so you have another category which goes by the name closed permeable okay so these are the three possibilities that exist now couple of things we need to we need to know at this point one is a polymeric material is a polymeric material becomes fluid like becomes fluid like number one when heated when heated above its glass transition temperature glass transition temperature when heated above its glass transition temperature now you may ask what is the glass tra transition temperature for various polymeric material it is listed and you have access to it uh, probably to get some order uh, if you want to know wh at what uh, what is the order of these glass transition temperature for common materials it is of the order of 100 degree centigrade so uh, uh, actual values you need to uh, there, there are, it varies so polymeric material becomes fluid like when heated above its last transition temperature or through the action of a solvent that means if you if you bring that through the action of a solvent that means if you dissolve the polymer if if you put the polymer inside a solvent there is a possibility that the polymer will melt which we have seen in our day to day life there are solvents in which this polymer is polymer is dipped now when we are talking about this um, patterning when, when you are talking about this filling uh, of uh, capillaries this network of capillaries by polymer if we if we try to articulate it in 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 the terms of uh, this microfluidic uh, manufacturing it would be it would be like this that liquid fills the mold by capillary rise rise is not by capillary action would be probably the right word that by capillary action after the liquid after the liquid fills the capillaries it is solidified it is solidified it is solidified by two ways one is by thermal method thermally thermally means it was above your uh, above glass transition temperature now you simply cool it so it is automatically it will solidify or e by exposure to uv light lot of times it's a pre polymer it is it is uh, it, 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 you have all the ingredients but the solidification process is initiated once you expose that polymer to uv light so that is that is also another possibility and once this is solidified then what you do is you go for removal of the mold so the mold is removed okay so what you have is you have a choice of thermally doing it that means cooling it basically or by exposure to uv light if you have uh, if you if you have the polymerization to get complete and uv light happens to be the uh, agent to accomplish that or if you are if you have dissolved the polymer in a solvent then you have to make sure that the solvent is evaporated 
that is probably the third choice you have solvent solvent is evaporated okay so if we if we talk about this feeling pattern patterning by natural or patterning by capillary action or feeling of this mold by capillary action this is something which you are actually doing okay so th this this probably you understand now there is another force other than the capillary force which can also be used for patterning but this is probably this is done uh, when the when the feature size is smaller that is the use of van der waals force in in these uh, the, these term, terminologies in, in in my people working in this area this is also referred as london force okay this the point here is that this force is large when the film thickness is small what film we are talking about here if you have a substrate on top of that you have a film okay if the film thickness is small if the film thickness is small then this force becomes significant okay in fact there is a, there is a dependence which is non linear so more it is it more it, more the film becomes thin this force increases in a non linear manner so so it, when it is large the film thickness is when this becomes large when film thickness is is is, is small and what that means is that when film thickness is small enough when film thickness is small enough okay when film thickness is small enough the film will break into islands by a process referred as de-weighting and this implies exposure of sur exposure of substrate surface exposure of substrate surface between the islands between the islands that means this film will start breaking this film will start breaking into islands and between these islands the sub substrate surface is getting exposed so this film is breaking all right the deweighting phenomena these these phenomena is used to fill i mean s sub micrometer channels i mean when when the channel when the feature size is smaller so the deweighting phenomena for so for thin polymer film thin polymer films um, by thin i mean less than say 100 nanometer on solid surface undergoes undergo deweighting when taken above uh, I, I mean this thin polymer films this this is this is common the thin polymer films of this 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 dimension they undergo deweighting these undergo deweighting when taken above glass glass transition temperature so what this means is if you can first form 
a thin polymer film and then heat it above its glass transition temperature, you will see these islands being formed. Okay. Initially, uh, of course, this, this process is much more complex than the way I am presenting it, but I just wanted to uh, wanted you to appreciate that there is such method existing. Make sure that uh, do not have any confusion here. Initially, initially cylindrical holes are created, holes are created, basically cylindrical holes means if you, if you have, if this is the, if you, this is the surface, you will see this portion the substrate is getting exposed like this and initially whole cylindrical holes are created in the film. And as the holes grow, as the holes grow, the The, as basically, as as the as the holes grow, it, you have a rim here. The, it, it 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 forms a rim, and these rims, these rims, they come in contact with each other. They come in contact with each other, and then they form. Instead of holes, you will see droplets existing. In, in in between phase so the, these holes it has grown and so at a, at a grown up state so first a cylindrical holes will appear and then you will see that these would be forming so these holes are holes are there basically instead of instead of holes the pattern becomes that you have a droplet here you have a droplet there you have a droplet there you have a droplet there and rest of the part is all blank so if somebody requires such feature if somebody requires such feature in the on, on the on the micro on the microfluidic surface, he can uh, the person can utilize these uh, these force as well. That is that is what I'm trying to trying to convey. All right. Now let us so so with this with this background. So I have I have basically choice of one is capillary action, which we have talked about and I said there are these, these various uh, methods possible and uh, I said that there is also existing another alternative method which goes by the name uh, which is basically this use of van der Waals force and this is applicable for uh, features which are probably sub micrometer uh, scale. Now let us talk about these open ended open ended capillary because we have we said uh, I mean I will be focusing on this this capillary action here in today's class. So, we talked about these three methods open ended closed and closed permeable. Let us see how it would appear if we want to focus on the open ended open ended capillary. Open ended capillary it is let us say we are talking about capillary filling capillary filling of a pre polymer i mean pre polymer means you expose it to uv you you expect that the polymer it it will, it will solidify capillary filling of a pre polymer in PDMS mold. So, here the mold is made of PDMS, mold is made of PDMS. You know the PDMS material, PDMS material is used for the for making of microfluidic device, but here I am talking about the mold that you are using that is made of PDMS. You understand that is that is highly possible. So, PDMS mold, PDMS mold 
so capillary filling of a pre-polymer in PDMS mold. Now, if one drop is placed in one end, and the capillary action, capillary action takes the pre-polymer to other end of the channel, then based on Poiseuille's equation, if V is filled liquid volume okay then and t is time so dv dt the rate of change of filled liquid volume what would that be that would be the velocity multiplied by the area that would be equal to pi r to the power 4 rho divided by 8 mu z what is now these terms mu is equal to viscosity of this liquid viscosity of liquid t is time r is equal to radius of capillary and z is equal to distance to which liquid fills the capillary. Okay, so, if these are the terms, then you can write using Poiseuille's equation that rate of change of the rate of change of filled liquid volume dv dt is this quantity and on top of this I think this is this should be P, right? P. Delta P. Okay. So I, I this is this is probably this is this is this should be P. Or or I can say this is delta P. Yes, delta P. Fine. Now now, if we if we if we try to write the dry if 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 the driving force driving force for for the feeling is Laplace pressure, then then. then you can write this p to be equal to or, or this delta p to be equal to 2 sigma cos theta if you have a yeah this, this should be included divided by r. So, in that case you can write d z d t that is equal to from this r sigma cos theta divided by 4 mu z and then you have v is equal to here because th this is happening because 
v is equal to pi r square z that is what you are using. So, if that is so you get z is equal to r sigma cos theta divided by 2 mu to the power half t to the power half. So, this gives you the distance that you would be traveling that, that the distance that z z is distance to which liquid fills the capillary as a function of time. So, if one is interested to know how far the, the say at a given time how far this pre polymer will travel inside the PDMS mold this this can be figured out from this equation. One thing I would like you to appreciate here is that the distance distance to which capillary filling occurs becomes smaller distance to which capillary filling occurs becomes smaller if capillary size goes down if surface tension goes down if contact angle goes down. So, you want them to be up so that you can have a faster feeling and viscosity probably you do not have much control because it is a pre polymer that uh, you have uh, here. So, pre the, the, the anyway the for, for the viscosity it is inversely related. So, that, that, that dependence you can see here. And uh, the other aspect is this whether to use what, what con whether it should be an equilibrium contact angle or a dynamic contact angle that, that, that also that point is also there which can be looked into. Now, instead of uh, this, so we talked about this open ended capillary and we have some understanding at what rate it will be filled and everything. If somebody is working with a completely closed capillary completely closed completely closed capillary what i mean by completely closed capillary is that you have suppose this is a feature we have and you want and and you have put it this is the substrate this is the substrate and you are having a feature and it is completely closed uh, i should not be putting it here this way probably probably let us uh, let, let, let us let us let us not uh, let us draw it again you you have a completely closed you have a completely closed capillary so this is the feature you have and here you are expecting that the, the, so, so there is a gap through which the liquid is penetrating here now by Laplace uh, by capillary action the fluid tends to go up this way. So, maybe it has gone up to this level. So, this is this is the level up to which the liquid is liquid could fill. However, the air that is there this air is getting compressed. So, you have a air pressure here. So, what I mean is 
that this capillary the, this capillary by capillary action liquid will tend to fill this fill this channel however by doing that it is compressing the air which is there because air has no outlet so what will happen is so this is this is the case when an impermeable mold impermeable mold is placed on polymer surface let, let us say so that is what i'm saying this this we have to assume that there is polymer okay so here it we have the polymer and maybe maybe you have you have the substrate down there so you have the polymer should come in and go inside there so impermeable mold is placed on the polymer surface air pressure will build up i mean that you have already understood in in a closed capillary so this air pressure impedes air pressure impedes impedes capillary action capillary action now one thing you got to understand that at the beginning this entire channel that the air pressure was atmosphere so if somebody wants to say say let us say this height this height is z or, or or let us say this height is say h capital h okay and let us say this level is say z so basically capillary capillary rise has taken place at atmospheric pressure to a height z in a capillary of depth h let me let me write it again capillary rise took place at atmospheric pressure to height z in a capillary of depth h okay so the pressure of the trapped air in the capillary is is what if we the, the the area remains same so it is the volume and if we if we assume that the pressure in multiplied by the volume remains same so what would be the new air pressure if p0 is equal to initial air pressure which for all practical purposes would be 1 bar p0 is initial air pressure then you can say that the final air pressure would be final air pressure would be equal to p0 into h divided by h minus z all right or you can write this as p0 divided by 1 minus 1 minus say z prime where z prime is equal to z divided by h now you, you we are interested in knowing what is what is z by h what is z prime for that matter how far cap capillary can go again capillary rise also has a limitation so how far it can go from compressing this air because if you see that the 90 percent got filled 90 percent of this volume gets filled so you you will assume okay i started with a feature size and then i got 90 percent of it so you better have your feature a little higher and have this done so uh, our thought process works that way so if we if it is th that way then the capillary rise so one thing you can write here is that the capillary rise will cease capillary rise will cease will cease when this final air pressure 
is equal to Laplace pressure. So, if that is so, then you can you can equate this with the Laplace pressure, which is equal to then 2 sigma cos theta divided by r. So, then you can come up with this z prime as equal to or or you can you can you can write if this is the if if, if, you, if you write this as pl then you can write z prime as uh, tell me if i am wrong here i can possibly write pl divided by p0 that can be written probably z prime so, 1 minus z prime would be p 0 by p l or 1 by p l minus p v yeah, I can write it right. So, this is this is so if you know the Laplace pressure if you know say so if this is atmospheric pressure. So, you can come up with what would be this this z prime. Now, you need to understand couple of things here is that no capillary no capillary rise. will take place if Laplace pressure is less than 1 bar or less than atmospheric pressure. If it is less than atmospheric pressure, no capillary rise will take place. That is one issue here. Second point is that Laplace pressure increases <coughs> with capillary capillary size with capillary radius decreasing. Okay. So, that means decreasing feature size what this means is decreasing feature size decreasing feature size can uh, decreasing feature size can ensure p l is greater than p 0. Now, one, one thing I would like to then point out then if you have a variable feature size then in so you 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 can expect rise also would be variable that is that is another uh, another issue here so that needs to be looked into as well okay there is another point which i need to make here is that why I why I started that this uh, I started talking about this PDMS mold, PDMS mold. I, I mean that that means this we are by mold I mean this. So this material is made of PDMS. Okay, it has certain purpose. I mean if you have this if this mold is made of PDMS, uh, basically what you need is, I mean you, you have a choice of hard mold or you have a choice of soft mold or 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 hard mold hard mold uh, you if you if you have a choice of hard mold plus hard substrate hard mold plus hard substrate okay and or in other words you can have and I, I do not want to call this soft mold soft mold a flexible little flexible mold not very flexible, but some flexibility uh, that is actually required that is why I have uh, mentioned there this is PDMS mold because 
this this amount of flexibility certain amount of flexibility is required i can tell you why i mean from from fundamental standpoint you are talking about a substrate this is a substrate and then you have this mold they are coming in contact with each other right so this is made of pdms this this material is made of pdms now you have to make sure that the contact between these this mold and this substrate that contact has to be good if there is if there so, so everything has a, they have a roughness right this one has a roughness the upper one has a roughness the bottom one has a roughness so when you are bringing them in contact with each other you have to make sure that they are they are really they are contacting with each other otherwise they could be uh, i mean you you may not be satisfying all these requirements of contact angle i mean you are you are saying okay this is the contact angle that you have and then contact angle you are using but if this is if your upper one is like this the bottom one is like this and they are not contacting with each other and then you are having the liquid so if your calculation is based on that then there could be trouble so soft mold will at least no no so so you can you can achieve a, what do you call conformal contact you can achieve by pressing them hard that is that is possible i mean always you can you can you can press them hard so that they are uh, they make a conformal contact however if you press them hard i mean if you are ready to put that much of exercise on this then you may as well squeeze the liquid into it instead of depending it on depending on on the on the polymeric uh, on on the on the capillary phenomena to go everywhere you can just squeeze it so so these these particular issue you need to uh, understand that this slight roughness slight roughness or uneven layout uneven layout on the mold will uneven layout on the mold will go against this will go against the perfect weighting perfect weighting of capillary wall so you need the choice is you need high pressure to bring them in contact high pressure to bring them in contact but then probably this capillary um, filling by capillary action becomes inconsequential because if you are really employing high pressure then you can you may as well use the squeezing to have this material travel so this so flexibility in the mold itself has uh, some benefit certain some amount of flexibility should be there to bring this contact there is so the third point i mean so we have talked about open we have talked about closed and the third point was when you have this permeation when there is a possibility that some part can permeate through the wall of that uh, mold so we are talking about closed permeable capillary this is the third point now in closed permeable capillary this is first accomplished this is first accomplished by solvent assisted solvent assisted molding uh, what what is that uh, pdms mold pdms mold is weighted 
PDMS mold is weighted with a solvent and then is brought into contact brought into contact with the brought into contact with the surface of the polymer you can see what is what we are doing here we just reversed it pdms mold is weighted with a solvent and then is brought into contact with the polymer and that polymer is supposed to be dissolved in that solvent that's the idea so while in contact while in contact the solvent dissolves a thin layer of polymer and this polymer solution conforms to and this polymer solution the solvent dissolves a thin layer of polymer and this polymer solution conforms to the surface topology of the mold by capillarity so basically this solvent dissolves a thin layer of polymer and this polymer solution will conform to the 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 surface topology so while in contact the solvent dissolves a thin layer of polymer and this polymer solution this polymer solution would be uh, would be now traveling to the nook and cranny of this uh, so the features by capillary action so this is a possibility next the solvent permeates by the mechanism that we said and so polymer solution solidifies so polymeric uh, uh, polymer solidifies solvent permeates and polymer solidifies so that is that is that is that is basically this is this is this is what you call solvent assisted molding this is this is this is probably this this is given the name solvent assisted molding there is another possibility which is which goes uh, which which go, but another possibility is there that after the spin coating immediately immediately after the spin coating immediately after the after immediately after the film is formed formed by spin coating uh, what what do you do after spin coating you you generally you 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 have that uh, you have that liquid part if if ev evaporated right so you you put it after the spin coating you put it in a in in oven or or you let it dry so immediately after the film when still it is wet it has not been no, evaporated at that state if you can bring the mold and put it on top so that is also another another possibility so you have a thin film and and uh, so 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 you, you have you have when it comes to closed permeable capillary closed permeable capillary you have one is solvent assisted molding where you have the polymer which is solid but pdms mold that you have is uh, on the surface you have that solvent and you bring in contact you bring that and wherever it touches the polymer that those portions polymer gets softened or uh, polymer gets dissolved and that liquid that forms it, that will flow through the nook and cranny of those features using capillary phenomena that is one possibility other possibility is that you you have spin coated the polymer and the polymer still contains it, it has not the, the the liquid part has not that uh, sol solvent part has not been evaporated 
the solvent is still there and now you bring in the mold and put it on top so then also you expect that with the solvent that uh, uh, that polymer will enter into the features by same capillary action and the same process will continue so this is this is also the, the this is the this is the second method second method by which you can go for this closed permeable uh, capillary filling so now probably you understand that this if if somebody is interested in um, filling the micro features these are the three possibilities they have and these are the uh, these are the these are prob uh, probably I mean I just want you from this lecture what I want you to do is I want you to appreciate that there is substantial amount of physics involved and you need to be sensitive to these uh, theories while uh, while 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 designing your fabrication uh, process it is not just a, 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 some uh, empirical cooking I mean it is it, it has a lot of physics behind this and of course you can you can you can one can utilize the the van der Waals force if somebody wants to go for feature size below micrometer scale and how it fa for how it works out I have already talked about that if you have a thin film and more you get it becomes thin so you have a thin polymer film and then you heat it and then you see that the features are forming and then at one point you will see that simply it would you are left with some droplets present on the substrate so if that is something which you are looking for you can probably make use of these uh, the, the, these 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 processes to your advantage so that is all i have as far as today's class is concerned thank you very much